Do you really need a pro iPhone? You see, with the current iPhone 13 model, I have the 13 Pro and 13 Mini. And then the previous iPhone 12 models, I had the 12 Pro and 12 Mini. So I've really been playing around with both phones, having them on me on a daily basis. And I've got to think in myself that whether or not I actually take any advantage of having a pro iPhone. And I thought this would be perfect because with the upcoming iPhone 14s, you're gonna have a Pro model, a Pro Max model, then two identical standard models. So you'll have a standard 14 and then a 14 Max. They're gonna be identical phones separated by Pro and non-Pro features. So is it worth shelling out that extra cash? Because I myself, if you've watched my channel, you know how much I love the 13 mini or the 12 mini. And despite having these pro iPhones, I myself, I don't know if I really need them. So let's get started and talk about whether you should go pro or no. First and foremost, let's talk about looks because whether you're gonna put a case on your iPhone or not, looks might or might not be important to you. So with the standard iPhones, you get a matte aluminum finish along the edges, and then you've got glass on the back with a glossy colored finish. All the colors, they're very vibrant. I wouldn't say they're childish, but they're not as mature as the Pro models. With the Pro models, you get more heft and more weight to the phone itself. You've got stainless steel edges, then you've got a frosted glass back on the backside, which looks really good. I mean, if I had to just base an iPhone on its look, I would definitely go with the Pro models. The colors also are very subtle. They're very good to look at, whether you're getting the green one or the graphite or the silver, whichever one you choose, they all look great. So it's really gonna be up to you. For me personally, I don't wanna de decide a device based on its look alone. So I'm perfectly fine with the standard looking iPhone 13. The matte aluminum edges are perfectly fine. The glossy back glass, it can be annoying because it does pick up a lot of fingerprints, but I have a case on it and I'm good with that. I don't, I don't mind the look whatsoever. Now with the looks out of the way, let's talk about the camera. Right away, when you look at both phones side by side, you'll notice that the standard model is missing the telephoto lens. Now I personally don't use that lens whatsoever. I have it in my 13 Pro and I've never actually used it. I just don't, I use the wide camera, which is sufficient enough. Now, apart from that physical difference between the two and the lack of a telephoto lens on the standard iPhone model, if you're looking at pictures shot with either one or the other, you're really not gonna notice the difference. It's only when you actually pinch into zoom and you look at things in detail that you'll actually be able to notice the difference. Now, you're seeing a lot of pictures that are taken by both the 13 mini and 13 pro. You tell me, can you notice a difference between the two? Same thing goes for video. You can't really notice that much of a difference. The wide camera for me personally is more than good enough on the standard iPhone. Now, it does get a little tricky because on the pro iPhones, you also have things like pro raw. Now pro raw is a photo format, which captures more detail and shoots a picture in layers so that you can go in there and tinker around with things like exposure, saturation, the brightness, the colors, everything. You can really do a lot with pictures shot in RAW as opposed to just taking a regular standard photo with an iPhone because then the iPhone is just going to process it itself. Now, same thing goes for ProRes. If you're somebody that's really into having control of the way that your video looks on your iPhone, then yeah, ProRes is also going to be important. But what you have to remember is to actually get 4K ProRes, you need to get up to the largest sized memory capacity of the Pro model. So you gotta get up to that one terabyte, which means that you're gonna have to shell out extra money. Now, I personally, I haven't shot many photos in Pro Raw. I played around with it when I first had it. And then Pro Res, same thing. I played around with it once or twice, but I'm happy. What you're 
seeing right now is the 13 Pro shooting me in 4K and it looks just fine. I have no problem. And then other videos you've seen the 13 mini doing it. So I personally don't find it to be that big of a difference. But what you need to understand is that you really have to decide whether or not those pro features, things like pro raw and pro res are going to matter to you. And then also with the telephoto, you've got macro photography. So if you're somebody that's really into photo and video, then yes, the pro model is going to be the one. But if you're somebody that just pulls out your iPhone, snaps a photo, puts it on Instagram or creates a Snapchat video or photo, you're going to be just as fine with a standard 13 or a standard 12. Now for me personally, apart from all these pro camera features, one thing that I didn't like about the iPhone 12 models is that they didn't have stabilization built in. The stabilization wasn't the sensor shift stabilization that you get with the iPhone 13 and 13 mini. So there is a big difference. When I had the 12 Pro and 12 mini, I myself was so reluctant to actually shoot video with the 12 mini simply because the stability wasn't as great. But with the 13 mini, that problem has been solved. So if you go out and get an iPhone 13 or 13 mini, stabilization is not going to be a problem for you. So all your photos and videos are just going to look that much better with the addition of censorship stabilization. And the other thing that you have to remember is that with the iPhone 13 models, the camera is borrowed from the 12 Pro Max. So you're basically getting a recycled camera in a newer model phone, which wasn't a slouch by any means. You see, a camera difference between one generation of an iPhone is really not going to be that crazy of a difference. So photos and videos that you make with the standard model are really not going to be that much different. Now with the camera out of the way, let's talk about the display. And what matters to me with a display is how smooth it is and how easy it is to view when outdoors. See, with the 13 and 13 mini, you've got a max brightness of 800 nits. And then with the 13 Pro and Pro Max, you get a max brightness of 1000 nits. Now both, when watching HDR content, will do 1200 nits. But let's just exclude that for now because most of the time you're not going to be doing that. How is it to look at when you're just going about your daily things? Both the 13 mini and 13 pro have no issue whatsoever. I mean, the 13 mini is slightly dimmer, but is it an issue for me by any means? No. Now what is an issue is not having promotion. So see with the 13 pro Apple added, ProMotion, which is where the display can scale up to 120 hertz or scale down based on what you're doing. So let's say you're playing a game which has lots of fast paced motion going on. The 13 Pro is going to be able to keep up with that. Whereas on the 13 Mini, you do notice it stutter. Now with stuttering, that's tied a little bit to the performance as well, but we'll get to that in a second. So if I was to put the gaming aside, anything else I do up until now, the iPhones always had 60 Hertz displays. And I believe that at the 60 Hertz refresh rate, they are as smooth as butter. It's the best 60 Hertz display that I've played around with. So I personally, if I was to just put the gaming aside, I have no problem with just the 13 minis 60 Hertz, or if you get a 13, it's going to be the exact same. Now let's talk about that performance. See, both the iPhone 13 standard models and the Pro models have the A15, but where the difference is, is that the Pro models actually have a five core GPU instead of the four core GPU found in the standard iPhone 13 or 13 mini. Now here's where we go back to that gaming aspect. When you're gaming, you do miss that additional CPU it does make a difference depending on the kind of games you're playing. If you're just playing casual games that really don't need a lot of power, you're going to be just fine. But if you are playing things like Call of Duty Mobile that I play, by the way, if you are playing games, check out my video on the Backbone One gaming controller because that thing is an awesome accessory. If you love playing games, 
definitely check it out. I'll link the video down below for you if you're interested. But yeah, if you're gonna be doing intensive gaming, then the pro model is gonna be where it's at because once you combine the fluid rate of the ProMotion display and then also that additional GPU, you get a very smooth and reliable experience as opposed to with what you get on the 13 or 13 mini. So that is gonna be something that you have to consider for yourself. Now, if you put gaming aside and let's say you're trying to edit videos or edit photos and stuff like that on your phone, neither phone is gonna give you any issue. Whether you have the pro model or the regular 13 or 13 mini, you are gonna be able to get through it just fine. I have done this myself on the mini models without issue not only on the 13, but also on the 12 mini. So you don't need to be worried about performance unless you're really looking to game a lot. Now for gaming, you also need to take into consideration battery life. That is something that's important. So how does the battery hold up, whether you have a pro iPhone or a non-pro one? See, with the 13 mini, since it is a smaller phone, it has a smaller battery, Battery life can be an issue, especially once you start doing heavy intensive things. But for standard usage, I have no trouble making it through the day. But let's say you just put the 13 Pro and 13 side by side. They both have the same battery. So you're going to get equal performance out of the battery. It's not like the Pro one is going to give you additional hours of video playback or music listening. It's going to be exactly the same for both of them. I don't really see why you would. Maybe the Pro might actually excel a little bit because it can scale down the display to 10 hertz when you're doing things like reading. So you might get better battery with the actual Pro. And of course, if you're looking at Pro Max and you don't even want to look at the standard model, then yeah, you're going to get much, much better battery life. So that is something to consider. You see, when I was thinking about whether I actually need a pro iPhone or not, these were the key things, camera, battery, performance, display. The only reason I threw looks in there is because it might or might not matter to you what your iPhone looks like. My 13 mini sits in a case. It doesn't matter to me that the edges are aluminum. I actually enjoy the fact that it's actually lighter. It's compact. The battery's smaller, but it works for me, might not for you. See, the only reason I had to bring up battery life is because of the mini models. If you're considering one of them, you're really gonna have to think whether or not you can actually live with that kind of compromise. But other than that, if you take a 12 Pro and 12, and then you take a 13 Pro and 13 and put them side by side, they're very identical. And I know a lot of people might be like, oh, for $100 more, I'll get the Pro. $100 is a lot. If you're coming from one of the older iPhones, you're gonna need those $100 because these iPhones don't come with the power bricks. So you're gonna need to buy a power brick. These have MagSafe, so if your old iPhone didn't have MagSafe, you're gonna need to buy a car mount. If you're getting a mini, you might need a MagSafe battery pack. Check out mine that just got listed on my website at techmomo.com. $100 there can actually take you a long way and you can grab yourself a bunch of cool accessories. Or if you don't even care about accessories, that's $100 that you save. I really think that it's not about having the best of the best, but more about what you actually need. That's what it's all about. And so you should really think about whether you actually need a pro iPhone or not. For me personally, going forward, the standard model is enough. And you might think that might be crazy, but smartphones have actually advanced so far that even the standard model isn't really all that bad. Take away those pro features and those little bit of bells and whistles that you get with the pro models, the standard model is just fine. Think about what we do, right? We text our friends and family, we take pictures of our pets, kids, family, post it on social media, that's what we're all doing, right? That's the majority of our usage. And for that, the standard model is just fine. I really hope this video has helped you. And if you do have any questions about the pro or standard iPhones, 
let me know down below and I'll be more than happy to help. Thank you so much for your time. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video.